Hey, good morning. It's Jan Pastor Harold Taze up with the sun for September the 6th, uh, this Friday morning. I'll be ending up our cruise here, and I'm in the uh, the buffet area here. Um, and it's Friday, so we're going to finish up on Isaiah 17. Before I start, I'm going to go with what I usually end with, which is basically getting you to get into a church service. Uh, either you can come out to 2200 Glasgow Avenue, where we are in Newark, Delaware. We're glad to have you. Or get with the body of believers where your local church is. Or you can watch on here online, either on YouTube or Facebook, like you are right now, on Sunday morning at 1030. So let's get to Isaiah 17. This message has come to me discerning concerning Damascus. Look, the city of Damascus will disappear. It will become a heap of ruins. The towns of Orir will be deserted. Flocks will graze in the streets and lie down undisturbed, with no one to chase them away. The fortified towns of Israel will also be destroyed, and the royal power of Damascus will end. All that remains of Syria will remain will, will share the fate of Israel's departed glory, declares the Lord of Heaven's armies. In that day, Israel's glory will grow dim. Its robust body will, will waste away. The whole land will look like a grain field after the harvesters have gathered the grain. It will be desolated like the fields in the valley of Rapim after the harvest. Only a few of his people will be left like stray olives left on a tree after the harvest. Only two or three remain in the highest branches. Four or five scattered here and there on the limbs, declares the Lord the Lord, the Lord, the God of Israel. Then at the last, the people will look to their Creator and turn their eyes to the Holy One of Israel. They will no longer look to their idols for help or worship what their own hands have made. They will never again bow to their Asherah poles or worship their, at their pagan shrines they have built. Their largest cities will be like a deserted forest, like the land that Hivites and Amorites abandoned when the Israelites came here so long ago. It will be utterly desolate. Why? Because you have turned from God who can save you. You have forgotten the rock who can hide you. So you may plant the finest grapevines and import the most expensive seedlings. They may sprout on the day you set them out. Yes, they may they may bloom, or they may blossom on the very morning you plant them, but you will never pick the, any grapes from them. You will only harvest your only harvest will be a load of grief and unrelieved pain. Listen, the armies of the many nations roar like the roaring of the seas. Hear the thunder of the mighty forces as they rush forward like thundering waves. But though they thunder like breakers on a beach, God will silence them, and they will run away. They will flee like chaff scattered to the winds, like a tumbleweed whirling before a storm. In the evening, Israel waits in terror, but by the dawn, its enemies are dead. This is the just reward for those who plunder us, a fitting end for those who destroy us. So God is basically telling how Damascus uh, in Israel will will be destroyed and fall away uh, because the northern kingdoms were not listening to God. They weren't going for God and they weren't taking care of things as God asked them to. Um, and you say the last the, then at last the people will look to their Creator and turn their eyes to the Holy One of Israel. They will no longer look at the idols for help or worship what their own hands have made. This is where I want to look in for today, is what are we turning to? Are we turning to our money? Are we turning to our status? Are we turning to our government? Are we turning to anything that we're not turning to God when we come, when issues become prevalent in our lives? When 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 something happens to us, a tar, trial or tribulation of any kind, who do you turn to? Do you turn to God in prayer and, and listen to the Bible or, or get with someone and ask, what is God's intent at this time? Or are you learning to turn into something else? The world teaches us to turn into ourselves and to you know grab yourself by the bootstraps and stand yourself up. And you're a self-made person and you, you don't need to do anything else other than get in there and fight yourself. But I tell you, God does not want that in your life. He wants you to turn to him. And he could be using the current situation to better equip you for something else later in your life. It's a situation that's scary for all of us because... We, we don't like change in our lives, but sometimes God provides trials and tribulations in our lives to enforce a change to get us to the person that he wants us to be. So just take that into consideration. I want to pray with you guys, and we'll let you go for this Friday. And as always, like I said, you know, get to church on Sunday so you can be with the body of believers so you're better equipped to, to give an account for what you believe in. And make sure that you're reading your Bible and praying to God. Trust and obey 
That's the way to getting to Jesus Christ and salvation. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the day. and just thank you for the ability to get on here and talk to people in the morning. Just ask that uh, you give us uh, your blessing so we can be a blessing to others. Ask you to be with those that are sick and grieving. As always, we want you to put your healing hands upon them. Just ask for a hedge of protection. We continue to travel. Uh, and Lord, just uh, you know, be with our church. Continue to grow it in the direction you want us to go. Close the doors you need to. to Lord, open those as you need to. And, and speak to me and the, and the remainder of our church so we can hear you, Lord, so we know what step to take next. And I say in Jesus' name, amen. With that, we'll see you guys on Monday. We don't see you any sooner on Sunday. God bless. Have a beautiful day. Take care.